All right, so in the last video, I cut this out kind of cleanly. I made the atmosphere match pretty well. But now I want to actually change the lighting on these peaks to be a little bit more believable with that light source, right? And even though I want surreal and strange, I don't want it to just look blatantly weird. So I'm using what's called the Dodge Burn and Sponge Tools. And the first one I'm going to use is Dodge, just to show you what it does. It looks like a black lollipop because if you're in a dark room with traditional photography, that's what the Dodge tool looks like with an enlarger on photo paper. But what it does is it brightens the exposure wherever you click it. But the first thing you have to realize, just like with your eraser, is the tool settings. So I'm going to use a pressure sensitive soft brush just one of the defaults near the top and not the very top, right? So the soft round pressure size brush. I'm going to have the hardness at zero always when I use Dodge and Burn. And I always want the exposure level to be less than 20 because this is an incredibly powerful tool. Think of it like a magnifying glass that's like burning the sidewalk, right? So if you, if you use it like too heavily, you'll lose pixel definition just like if you pushed levels too, too much. So what Dodge does is it brightens the midtones, right? But what's great about it, it only does it within where my tool hits and it always does it relative to the pixels selected. So it's not painting anything. Instead, it's changing those pixels and just shifting the levels brighter. Now that's not really the problem I have with this resource, right? Because it's pretty bright, but it might help in some areas if I need to add highlights. So I'm going to take it back before I dodged. The next one is going to be more helpful to me in this instance. This is burning and it looks like a hand kind of cupping, like channeling the light. And burning, same kind of settings large soft brush so zero percent hardness pretty large brush only affecting the midtones that's safest and an exposure less than 20. and now this is where i can kind of paint in shadows so if the light source is coming from here there's going to be more darkness in the midtones right now don't worry about color because dodge and burn can bring out color it's actually not a color tool, but when you darken the colors that are there, which are very yellowish, it becomes kind of a yellowish brown as it darkens, right? And that's where the sponge tool comes in. So I'm just going to deepen some of these shadows to get that light to feel a little bit more directional. And then if I'm feeling really bold, which I kind of need to here if I'm going to save this element or I might just trim it out is I'm going to actually change my burn from just the midtones to the shadows. Now this is scary because it can go to solid black pretty easily, but now it will only affect the darkest darks. And what I should have done is do this on a duplicate <laughs> because this tool can change things pretty quickly. Just like when I was showing you direct adjustments, I like to do it on a duplicate first. But you can see all that that burn tool can do. Right. So now, let's burn it a little bit more. And see if I can use this. You know, make these kind of stand out a little bit more, but still with the moonlight on them. And we're going to learn how to do this in a few different ways in the coming projects, the dodging and burning. But this is just a quick introduction to it. You might not even need to use it on this project if your lighting directions are all fairly consistent. Because backgrounds are a lot more forgiving than characters are. Okay, now...
the sponge tool goes with these. We use the same sort of tool settings, 0% hardness, pretty large brush. And then you can set it to be either saturate or desaturate at a flow that's less than 20, right? Now to desaturate will take color out. It will kind of push it towards gray. This won't shift your color. You can always use color balance for that or hue saturation. But if things are still too yellow, this will shift it more towards gray, which will make it a little bit more believable. And then if I need to, I can always do a really big feather, like a 44 feather, and select just this range. And then go to Image Adjustments, Color Balance, and maybe shift this a little bit more towards the blues and the cyans and the midtones and in the shadows. Dim down those highlights a little bit. You can see the difference that made. That got rid of that kind of yellow tint. And because I did such a big feather, that kind of softened it in. Now that's about as much as I can do with that. But by working it so much, there's not a lot of sharpness in there. So now we go to these other tool adjustments, which are right above dodge, burn, and sponge. And this is to blur or to sharpen. The computer is better at blurring than it is sharpening. But what sharpen does, same sort of settings, is it will find edges and it will increase the contrast in the edges. So where this was kind of blurry, now these rocks will look a little bit sharper. And I do this with a very low strength. so that I can control it as I go. But you can spend a lot of time trying to save a reference when really all you should be doing is using the benefits of compositing and collaging and just cutting out the edge you want to keep. like this. Right. So now that's looking a little bit stronger, a little bit more believable for my setting. But we do have a lot of these direct tools at our disposal. So burn, these are kind of the fine find uh, refinement tools at the end of compositing to make things match. And it only matters where things show in the final. So if I turn on my layer in front of that, I see I need to clean up a little bit more of this edge. So I'm going to use my lasso. And I'm just going to go in and bite away at it. Okay, next, next layer, this one. How do I clean it up? So same thing, I start with my eraser at 100%, soft edged and large, and I get rid of any of those hard edges. And these hard edges came from my magic wand as I was cutting away at parts of it. And I like this here, that little valley. So I'm going to keep that. I like this little valley, but I don't like that hard edge there. So I can get rid of that. Okay, now I can go in either with my lasso with the one pixel feather. I'm going to zoom in to at least 100%, but not more than 200 
and I'm going to cut it out. Another thing you can do is make that selection and that acts like a stencil or a mask and then I can use my eraser first at 100% opacity but then if I want to at lower opacities once I've gotten rid of the hard edge and I can give it just a little bit of that haze right but not get rid of all of it all of it and you can see how my lasso wasn't right on so I can always hold down shift and add to my lasso and that's why zooming in at 200 percent is pretty helpful sometimes can also erase away from it. And the one pixel feather helps with that too. Some people prefer a three pixel feather. They prefer everything to be a little bit softer. Just depends what you're going for. But I want this to feel like a pretty textured desert. Okay, zooming in, zooming out. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing with this peak here. Just going to find little things. These little highlights to cut around. With natural material, you can always just make your own shape. Because sometimes using the magic wand will really kind of cut it up in a way you don't like. And even with just a one pixel feather, if you keep hitting delete, it will keep biting away at it one pixel at a time and softening. So for instance, this edge is pretty sharp right now, but if I use that one pixel feather and then I hit delete, then I hit delete again, it will keep softening it as I go. Hit delete again, keep softening, you know, on and on and on. Until it's pretty seamless. But being zoomed in at 400 doesn't make sense. Don't go more than 200. There's always more you could refine and fix, but the human eye is not going to see it in the print beyond 200 percent so as i get closer to this this valley I'm not going to cut it away cleanly anymore because I want that valley as part of my reference, right? So I'm not going to do this kind of thing. Instead, I'm going to use my erasers. So I might mask it by using my lasso with the one pixel feather and just taking an area. But then I'm going to use my eraser at a low opacity because I already got rid of the hard edge. I'm going to start just slowly biting away at it. And maybe that was even too much. So maybe I want a lot of that. So I'm just going to just do the, the littlest amount, right? Just kind of take it down. That's why I like using the tablet. I can also, I think I want a little more, let's see. Something like that. I can also use dodge and burn. And I'm just going to burn the midtones a little bit just on this mist. So I'm not getting rid of any pixels, I'm just kind of darkening it a bit. Now 
Like we even burn the shell.